Hi everyone. Today we're going to talk about a problem where you're given an array A of n integers and you're asked to find two integers that sum to a value S. So um, let's uh, break down this problem by looking at a few examples. So here, um, let's take this first example here. So you've got, you want to find two numbers from this array A that sum up to value 8. Now, uh, typically what we would do is, okay, we would just eyeball this and say somehow we figure out, okay, um, let's see, you got, you got a 2 here and I got a 6 here that sum up to give me the value 8. Now, if you break, if you uh, refine that further, um, if you come up, if you think about a refined way to do this, you would say, okay, hmm, let me look at 10. Okay, 10 is much greater than 8, so I'm just going to uh, skip that. Or look at two. Um, two is less than eight. So, is there some other number in this array that, which when added two, would give me eight? So, I look around and see. Okay, there's a six here. Okay, so that's how I get my first pair. Now, then I look at four. Okay, do I have another four? I don't. Twenty-five is greater than eight, so I skip that. Six. Okay. Um, um, take the difference. Eight minus six is two. So I do see a two here. So that is a that is a pair that I have already found. 7, okay, 7 is less than 8. Um, do I have a, uh, do I have the difference in the array, which is 1, I do not. So, so, um, um, so that is the fundamental way to think about doing this. Um, so if you want to structure that better, what you would do is essentially, um, from an algor algorithmic perspective, what we're saying is, um, we want an efficient way uh, given a number, say 2, for example, I want an efficient way to find another number uh, which, when added to 2, would give me 8. And uh, finding that, there's a couple ways to find uh, the other number. Uh, so, a few approaches are, I mean, one of the approaches that come to mind is binary search. Right now, if you want to do, um, if, you, if, you, uh, if you want to, as you may know, if you want to perform binary search on the on a array, you need to sort it first. So let's sort uh, array A. So we have so Zima have a function called sort and it takes an array A and it gives me uh, two, four, six, seven, ten, twenty-five. Now, if once you have the sorted array, you could say, okay, I'll pick two and then I look in the I look at the uh, array to see if I can find a six, and then you can uh, use the binary search. Um, let me call it bin search. Um, you can pass in the array and say in this case um, you're looking for six, and you can do that efficiently in a time complexity of big O of uh, log n. Right. So given so, um, and uh, across n elements, you would end up doing that search for big O of n log n. Right. So the total complexity will be big O of n log n in time. So, so that's the um, basic idea. Now let's take up another example here. So you have a, 10, 2, 4, and 25. Now let's use the same approach here. We're going to do a sort of a, so that we can actually do a binary search on, on the sorted array to find uh, pairs of numbers. So we've got 2, 4, 10, 25. And I'm asked to find a, sum, a pair of numbers that sum up to 20. Now, as you can see, uh, if you're given the sorted uh, array, if you start with 2, 20 minus 2 is 18. I do not have an 18. And you can easily see that there is no pair that satisfies uh, uh, the requirement where we sum up to 20. So let's just formalize this a bit more. So I think the um, uh, uh, there are a few approaches. Um, taking a step back, uh, if, you, uh, if you think through uh, um, possibilities of algorithms here, there are, there are three that come to mind, essentially. Um, do have to do with sorting. There may be more, but I think uh, most common ones are the following. So, two have to do with sorting. One, uh, sorting and searching. One is uh, the one we just talked about, sort and binary search. The other option is where you can sort, but then you can also do a. Uh, you can also go with a linear scan. Um, so uh, I'll talk about that in the next video, and uh, that would be. Um, it may be slightly better than binary search because. Uh, uh, the the cost involved is uh, basically big O of n, uh, linear scan. 
Uh, the third approach, which does not involve sorting, is using some using a hash table, right? So you basically you dump uh, as you scan, as you as you iterate um, through the elements of the array, you would uh, compute the difference and you put it into the hash table, and then uh, uh, if 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 the difference does not exist in the hash table, uh, and then you would go on. If it exists in the hash table, you would just stop. So we will talk about that again in the uh, in a subsequent video. But to just summarize. Uh, the time and the space complexities involved here. So, um, uh, let's, uh, let me just do this. Um, so we have, so these are the approaches. I'll just call this uh, time complexity and this is the space complexity. Um, so, um, So for, for binary search, um, the time complexity is for all approaches we go for and log in. Um, the space complexity involved, um, it's, it's big of one depending on uh, the, uh, the sorting approach you use. Now for heap sort, it's, you use constant extra space. So I'll just put down a comment here, heap sort. Now if you use a different sorting algorithm like quick sort, uh, it'll it'll take uh, it'll it might use a big of and big of login additional space. I'll just put it down here too. Just for quick sort. Um, so the in login comes about because the time for complexity of in login comes about because you because uh, you do a sort. Uh, and then you do a binary search. Okay, this is not right. I will, uh, let's put this linear scan here. So the sorting takes you big of n login and the binary search uh, for each element that you're searching incurs a cost of login. So across n elements, you get big of n login. So overall complexity is big of n login. So this here for linear scan, this is again it will also sort, uh, but the overall compl uh, so the overall complexity comes about from sorting. So you have big of n log n. Um, again, sorting depending on the type of sorting you get, you can use um, heap sort or quick sort or any other sorting approaches. Uh, the complexity, the space complexity, will depend on that. The hash table, uh, because you're doing it does not involve sorting, and you're doing only a linear scan. Uh, essentially you're iterating through all the elements of the array, you would incur a total cost of big O of n. And the space complexity is big O of n because you need, uh, you need space for the hash table. So now let's talk about, so this is approach one, this is approach two, this is approach three. Let's, uh, let's go over approach one. So, um, so this is sort and binary search. Okay, so um, I'm going to I'm going to write the uh, pseudocode here, and uh, I'm just going to call this function as can sum to target. It's going to take as input an integer array and a sum. Okay, the first step is to sort the array. Um, I have a temporary variable that keeps track of the count. Um, and basically going to start iterating through the array. I'm going to have int i. It's going to go from, let's say, 0 to n minus 1. Um, so let's say I have a temporary variable x. Okay, I'll just put it down here. Call this int x. x, uh, I'm going to store the difference between uh, the sum s, this is here, and the fi. And then I'm going to look for uh,
I'm going to search for x in array A. And if pause is not equals minus 1, then it means I found found a pair. I would just print it. And so that's the very simplistic approach. Now, um, there may be a few more things to consider here. So, um, for example, uh, this algorithm may not work for scenarios such as, say, if you look at this example here. I'm just going to put it down here. So, you have uh, so let's see, I just put down the sorted array here, and you're looking for s equals 20. Now, say you're here, your i, you're, you're iterated it, and you've gotten here, and you're looking for 20 minus 10, which is 10, and you might end up again here. So, and then you would say, okay, I found 10, and then you, you would incorrectly think that there is a pair 10 comma 10 in the array, and that is incorrect, and that would be the wrong answer. All right, so you need to handle that scenario. So. I'm going to blow this up and I'm going to say, okay, um, if pause is not equals i, okay, now there's a couple more scenarios you need to consider. Now, for example, if you have a scenario where you have 2, 4, 10, 10, 25, and your s is 20, right, so binary search, now let's say your i is here, you're in this iteration here, uh, your binary search may return i again. Right, uh, and you don't, and you still, you but you, but you don't want to return a false that you don't have. Given, given the, uh, given this, you don't want to return a false, but you want to say, okay, I want to look around this tent to see, okay, do I have an extra ten around here? That if I added to twenty would give me uh, uh, the result. So we need to handle that scenario. So I'm going to put that down here. So if or if pause is equal to i. And a of pause minus one equals a of pause. So basically, this is just looking around i to see if there is a um, okay. I have to add one. Here, if pause is greater than zero, and pause is equal to i, if pause is less than n minus one, and a of pause is equal to a of pause minus one. So, 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 this is basically looking around looking around this tent to see, I'm looking towards the right and I'm looking towards the left to see if there is a um, pair that I can sum. So that's the, that's approach one.